In this video, we'll create an advanced data entry form like this, where you can add values, create dependent dropdowns where depending on the department, you're going to get different roles and add error messages for incorrect inputs too. Once you click submit, two things will happen. First, it's going to send an automatic email where it's going to include the subject, the body with the user's name and attach their Excel file they've just filled. Second, all the data will be consolidated in a dashboard like this where you can see all of the different row entries as well as some key data up top through the KPIs like the count, the average age or the average salary. So let's get into it. In step one, we've got the registration form and the scenario here is that we work as the HR team and we want all our new employees to register. And for this, we're sending this form over here and you can see it's got three different tabs, the form, which we need to do some formatting on. Then we've got the dashboard tab where we're missing some of the KPIs and the entries and the data tab, which is just some supporting data. So starting in this form tab, which you can download for free in the video description to follow along, let's get started with some of the formatting. First, to get rid of the grid lines, we can go over to view and click on grid lines like that. So that looks a bit better. And all of these areas, all I've done here is I've added a fill color on the background. So I've changed it to, let's say, a light gray. And for each input box, I've just added some borders like the outside borders like that. So it stands out a bit more. Let me just quickly delete that as I've shown you. And first we're missing the submit button down below over here, which we can add by going to insert and going for a shape. More specifically, it's this rectangular shape that we can just add right around here in the middle. That looks about right. Let's change the fill color to match this top part. So this color looks good for me. Have no shape outline. And let's also actually, actually type it in. So it's just the submit button. I can bolden that. And let me also center it. So these two buttons over here, we can also make it maybe just a bit bigger, kind of like that. Awesome, that's the submit button done. And now let's work on the input boxes. For some of these, we want people to be able to write what they want as the first name. But for others like the department, we want them to be fixed. And for that, we have the data tab. We've got all of the departments up here. And so we only wanna show these different options. There's no way they can be in a different department than this. So for this to protect it, we can go over to data and click on data validation, which is this tick mark over here. Now we can just add a list. And so that list source is gonna be all the way in our data tab. And more specifically, it's just gonna be this top part from B to E. Let's press on okay there. And you can see that as the departments, just by pressing alt and down arrow, we can select the different ones like finance over here. Now, based on that, we would like the roles to change. If we go back over here, the finance ones have these different roles, whereas sales are gonna have some slightly different names. So we want that to be accounted for here automatically. Equals X lookup is the formula we'll use and the lookup value is the department comma. Based on this finance department, where can we find it? We can find it within this list up over here, comma. And the return array, what do we want return? The matching roles, right? So it's gonna be all of these underneath, comma. And if not found, meaning if we don't have any entry, then we just wanna add two quotations like that to leave it completely empty. This way, if the department is nothing, you'll see that nothing shows up under the roles. Let me press Control Z to go back. Right now we're seeing all of them, but we don't want that. We just wanna see one in here. So what we can do is copy this X lookup Control C there from the top. And now we're just gonna add it in a data validation like we did earlier. We want a list and the list source this time, we're gonna put the X lookup inside. So I've just copy pasted it there, press on okay. And now if we go over here and delete the first option and now go back in, we should have the list. So that's the finance, but if we go to the executive team, you'll notice that they're all chief executive officer, chief marketing officer, etc. So it's all moving dynamically. We wanna do the same thing with the gender. So again, we're gonna create a list and the source should be over in the data tab as well under our genders. So male, female, or other are the options we wanna add. We're gonna press on okay there. There we have it as a drop down. Finally, for the annual salary, we wanna make sure people don't write it as text or they don't put like 10K with a K in the end. Instead, to make sure they just write a number we can create an if statement down over here, which says equals if, hit the tab key. And the logical test is that is 
text. So if this value in here, this G12 is equal to a text value, comma, then we want some sort of an error message. So in quotations, I can put an asterisk and say something like, please add a number, not text, something like that, comma. And if it's false, meaning that it's all correct, it's been written in number format already, we don't need to say anything. So for that, we just add two quotations, close the parenthesis and hit enter. Right now, there is nothing in it, but let's say I put a 12, nothing happens. But if I say hello in here, you'll notice that I get this error pop up. I can also bolden it and italicize it like that to make it stand out a bit more. Awesome. So now I'm just going to put a number and it should all go back out. Great, we've set up the registration form and now let's work on the actual dashboard. So that's where we'll be storing all of the data we press submit to. If we go over here to the dashboard tab, you'll see that I just have some data right now. These are all the same headers that we had over here in this area. And then down below we have the actual entries. So up top we're missing a few KPIs. The first thing we can do is get rid of the grid lines. So Alt W V G is the shortcut there. And now we want to add a few different shapes. We can go over to insert under shapes. Let's choose this rectangular one as well. And I'm just going to add it in here. The idea is maybe to add about five different ones for each of the metrics that we care about. Let me quickly make the changes in here. Maybe I can also add a shadow for it to stand out a bit like that. You can obviously add text inside of it like that. But I think a more flexible approach is to actually create text boxes. So I'm going to go back to insert shape and it's this very first thing that's a text box. And this first one, let's say we call this the employee count. And I just need to make some changes to it, like changing the color to make sure it's got no color. So no fill and the shape outline. We want no outline as well, but we do want the text fill maybe in a white color. So it stands out. And I'm also just going to center that like so. Awesome. So that would be the first KPI for me. Let me make that a bit bigger. And now I'm just going to press Ctrl D to duplicate that. This time it's going to have all of the actual count. So the number itself. Let's just leave it as is for the time being. What we should focus on instead is the actual count value. And for that, we're going to need a formula. For example, here I can just put a counter. That's the function I'll use and just count these two entries. Because this is a table, if we add more entries, it's going to update dynamically. So right now we have two and that's the value we're going to link on this top part. But first, let's go over the different KPIs. The next thing we should find is the average salary. So we can just use the average function and select the two salaries like that. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. We then want to do the same thing for the average age. But this is a bit trickier as we have the date of birth. We don't actually have their age. So we'll use the date diff function, date diff, open up the parenthesis. And from here we need, first of all, their average date of birth. So that's going to be the average function. And it's going to be the date of birth from this area here, close the parenthesis, comma, and then we need the end date, which is just today. Use the today function for that comma and the formatting we want, we want it in years. So we can just put a Y in there like that in quotations and hit enter. You can see the average age is 37 as of today. Thirdly, maybe we're trying to meet some quotas like having a certain number of females in the team or having a certain number of interns. We can also track these things with a count if. Hit the tab key there and the range is all of the genders, comma, and we want those to be equals to female. That's the criteria we'll fil we're filtering by. So we have one female there. And now we want to do the same thing for the actual roles. So it's going to be a count if again, and the range is the roles, comma, and the criteria should be in quotations equals to an intern. Hit enter there, we have zero for now. And all we need to do once we have this data is let me change this part over here from employee count to this bar up top and make that equals to the value itself. So you can see now we have this too. And the idea is that when this value changes, so is the KPI. So let me format that in white, bolden it and make it a fair bit bigger, kind of like that. Let me make sure it fits in here accordingly. Awesome. So that would be the first one. And now we just need to duplicate all this step. So we can select all three of these cells that we've created. So the shapes and the text values, then we can right click on them and group. 
Once we group them, we can actually just duplicate them with control shift and drag to the right like that. And we want to do that for five different times like that. We're going to need to format these, but let me fast forward how I link all of the other ones too. Awesome. So that's what it looks like now. And for the values right above here, if you don't want to see them, if you delete them, you'll notice that we're going to lose all the KPIs. So instead, what you can do is match it to the background color like that by changing the font color. Awesome. Now that we finished the dashboard step, the next step is to automate the whole process. And for this, you'll notice over here that I've just added some inputs. But as soon as we actually press on submit, nothing happens over here in the dashboard tab. So that's what we want to work on automating all of that. And for this, we first need to just link all of the different inputs. So it's the first name, the last name, and let me fast forward the rest. Now I want to do the same thing with the actual entries. So it's Sam over here, then Wong down below, etc. Now that we have this bottom part set up, we just need to go over to the developer and record a macro, which is going to automate this whole process for us. So we need to show Excel how to do it once. We're fine with it being called macro one and we're just going to press on OK here. So you can see it's recording right now and it's going to follow these steps when we do them again in the future. So the first thing is to take all of this area over here. Control C to copy that. Let's head over to the data tab. And in this cell, instead of just pasting, we're going to go to paste special. It's important you follow the same steps here. What we can do for that is just right click and go to paste special. Within it, we can go over to the transpose and we want to paste the values. Press OK here. You can see all of the data has been pasted like this sideways. We can press Ctrl C to copy that. And now we need to bring it into our dashboard right here as the first new entry. So we can select on this cell and just click on the insert button. You'll notice that it's added this third line. The KPIs have updated. And the last thing we need to do is delete what's already there. So we want to delete all of these different entries. We want them to be empty to start with for the next person. Once that's done, let's go back up to this first cell and go to developer, stop recording. Awesome. So that's the automation step done, but now we need to actually assign it to the button. So on this submit button, we can right click and go to assign macro. It's going to be that macro number one, press OK there. And so it's been assigned. That means that if I just type some data, let me fast forward that. You can see the data has been added and I just press on the submit button. As soon as we do that, if we head over to the dashboard tab, you'll see that Sarah's data has been added and it's also being accounted for in the averages and the KPIs up top. While this seems to be working correctly, right now it doesn't actually send an email like we would like it to with an attachment. We're going to work on that next. But before that, if you're looking to level up your Excel skills and other in-demand data skills, you can consider checking out our data analyst program. It consists of five individual courses and over 350 lessons. First, in Excel, you'll learn best practices for formatting formulas and charts. You'll then apply these skills with real-life case studies, from data cleaning to building a dynamic financial model. Then, in Power BI, you'll dive into data visualization, and create interactive dashboards to extract maximum insights from your data. Thirdly, in SQL, you'll work with larger databases, writing SQL queries, and even connecting databases with applications like Excel and Power BI. Fourth, in Python, we'll start with programming basics and eventually advance to analyzing real crime data in Los Angeles and building our first regression model to predict housing prices. Finally, in VBA and macros, you learn to automate tasks like generating pivot tables, PL reports, and much more. So head over to the link in the description below to join our data analyst program now and gain the skills you need to thrive in today's data-driven world. All right, now moving on to the email automation. So let's take a look over here. We're going to need a few lines of code for this, but the very first step is to save this as a macro-enabled file by going to File, Save As, or the shortcut there is the F12 key. Here, instead of an Excel workbook, we want to save it as a macro-enabled workbook. Let's press on save there. Awesome. Once that's done, we can go over to this button under the developer tab, which is Visual Basic. And you'll notice in here, if you double click on module one, if nothing's showing right now, you should be able to see all of this data. What this is, is the macro that we've just recorded. So it's actually taking all of the steps that we did with our mouse 
and recorded them one by one, like deleting certain areas. So in the same area, we just want to add some more code. After all, we want it to be assigned to that same button, same submit button. So right in here, I'm just going to fast forward how I add some code. Awesome. So these are the lines I've added and down below is the macro that we recorded. So let's go over this. You don't need to understand it much, but there are some essentials that are important for you to know. So the D6 here, if you recall from the Excel file, is actually where the first name is located, D6, and then D8 is the last name. With that, we know that we can construct an email body that says something like first name, last name has submitted the employee registration form. If we scroll lower down, it's saying, hey, let's open up Outlook, so we initialize it, and then it's saying, send it to this particular email with this subject, this email body, and also make sure you attach the Excel file that we're currently working on. In the scenario that Outlook doesn't open, we can say something like Outlook is not installed or configured properly. That's all we need there. Feel free to change it, like changing the email, the subject, etc. if you need to. We can just close out of that for the time being. We can go ahead and press Ctrl S to save this whole area. And down below, if this thing kind of bothers you, you can also just hide it so we can change the color like that. Now, all we need is to press submit. Let me fast forward how I add some data. You can see I've added this data, so we should get an email with Sami Johnson as the first and last name. Let's press on submit here. Once we pressed on that submit button, you'll notice that I've sent this email with the subject new entry form, and it says that person's name and what they've done, and even added that Excel file in there. So that's all looking great. If we head over to the dashboard tab, you can see that their data has been added here too and our KPIs have changed accordingly. There is one more housekeeping item that's important, which is to protect this form. Let's take a look at how to do that. You don't really want people to write things on this side like that and just ruin it for everyone else. So what we're gonna do is just select all of the different input boxes by selecting the control key. We can go to format and click on lock cells and then go back into format and go to protect sheet. We can add a password in here. I'm just gonna add one for myself. Gotta confirm it like that. And so now if someone decides to write something here, you'll notice that we get an error. However, if they put their name in here, there is no problem. So that's all looking great. One thing this data entry form doesn't quite have is a search bar. Over here, maybe we have a huge list of employees, so we would be nice to search for them by name or by email. All of that you can learn with this video over here where I create a search bar or by taking our Excel course over here. Hit the like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.